Howdy guys, how's it going? So we're out here today to begin building a bushcraft shelter a concept slash idea that uh, I've been planning for a hot minute. And we're actually back at the spot that I'd come to whenever we stopped and I showed you guys my titanium mess kit. Um, and, and I did not do the full loop carrying that canvas tarp. Um, I was able to drive my four wheeler about 150 yards up until uh, there's just two, like there's just not there's just nothing. Like there's a bunch of trees in the way, like big old trees. So um, I was able to pack it. And that's why this isn't you know in its uh, inside the tube and it's already open and everything. I was just able to throw everything on the four wheeler. So I need to roll this out, get the lengthwise, made sure because this is that 10 by 12 canvas tarp that we use for the tarp tent and uh, we're essentially gonna be doing the double tripod with like the raised bed. Like I'm, you know, uh, you normally see it done with like the 55 gallon drum liners, uh, feed bags, uh, just doing like a slat bed across after running your cross members. But I'm wanting to do like a one, a one tarp uh, raised bed shelter system and see if I can make that work. That hole's not filled in all the way. Right, okay, so this is the 12 foot length. So we need this to be running the 10 foot length. So we know we, have, we, know we got plenty of space because the tripods will extend out just a little bit further. And there is a lot of briars and stuff right like through here, but like we're gonna be on a raised bed anyways. If there's anything poking up too high, we can chop it off. And where this is that thick canvas, like we ain't gotta worry about punching any holes in it. Plus it's gonna be supporting weight anyways. We're also going to have to compensate for the slight slope we got. This is just the flattest, flattest, most open area that I can find. Y'all want to see me go find and select every piece of wood, but here, here's a dead one that I saw. Like I said, I think we need it. I'm going to cut it a bit bigger. I want to cut it at like about head height. Or maybe, yeah, we'll go ahead and cut them head height. That way we can lash them. We can always, well, no, the thing is we got to have them spread. The reason this matters is because we want, we need shoulder width, but we need the lashings to be to where the top, the center pole's not too high because that's going to have to have a lot of weight against it. nice having a bigger saw. be some good fire making material. Also, by the way, in case you're curious, I know y'all never seen me wear this. Um, this is like I mentioned in the last uh, the video, like when we was uh, camping with the one wind shelter and everything about how the temperatures has been crazy. Like that night, it got down to like 37, 38. Today, the high is 69. The low for the night's 51. And then tomorrow night, when we be camping, the high is 74, and the low is 54. Um, but this is a shirt and pants from a company called Little Donkey. 
and they caught my attention because I actually own a donkey and his name is Pedro. Um, but this is like, uh, these are like hiking pants, hiking shirt. It's got a vent in the back. So perfect for like your fall, spring weather and definitely for summer. Um, and uh, the reason why it took me so long to show you guys is because right after I, the day that I got it, I was trying it on and uh, we had just got a kitten and it got loose, it got outside and was under the deck. So I had the army crawl underneath and the front of this thing got covered in red mud. Um, so it took like three or four washes to turn this thing from red back to its uh, tan color, but uh, but very comfortable and it handled army crawling on rock, dirt, and red mud. So we'll see how it does, you know, out here in the field. But in case you're curious, that's what she be. We'll have to lay this back down. Probably need Okay, yeah, so to make this a lot easier, what I'm doing is I'm just zip tying these extra support pieces so that I can make sure these things are leveled out. I'm zip tying them and then I'm going to go back with the bank line and lash them together. Although I think this one's going to roll off because this one on this end is a little short. That's going to be a lot wider than I thought it was. And then I think I just got to bring these back corners up a little bit when I lash them together. And we'll be golden. So let me do that. Okay, now that we got those lashed on, we can put our poles, and since we got all that extra support from those, we shouldn't have to do too much in terms of lashing these. And I might end up putting some supports, but then again, I don't weigh much of anything. I weigh 150, so that's something we can do afterwards.
Okay, now for the beginning of the experimental part is essentially what we're going to do is we're going to try to make this tarp into the bed itself and then figure out how we're going to go over top with a support bar. Uh, we're not going to be able to use this tripod because of just the way that it ended up. I might not even be able to finish this today before I gotta leave for that family barbecue. Because the hope is, however we do this, there's enough to go over the top area. I didn't expect to make the bed this wide, but one thing's for sure, it can fit a large individual. Okay, I just noticed something and I have an idea, but I don't know if it'll work. I'll show you what I'm talking about. I'll try to anyway. Okay. So either by luck or fate, whenever I pull the exact amount of tension that I need, these two grommets right here kind of line up with this stick so I can take and run and tie these corners off, but I'll still have to tie the middle supports before we do that. But if that works, then we'll be able to just take and have poles kind of set for this. And there will still probably be a little bit of sag in the middle, but we can deal with that by taking this right here and tying it off. So, Okay, so I got all of that part done, and it actually feels perfect. It's going to have that hammock bed feel, but I am going to have to take these. I'm going to start with just doing center pieces um, and see if that's enough support if not I'll do kind of like two on each side because I got plenty of leftover wood Yeah, we might even be able to, where this one ended up being a little bit longer, it might fit on that side, but we'll see. So this is going to go here, so I have to... Yes. Oh, bro, that's just like laying in a hammock. Thing about this is, is since it has that gap underneath, we can uh, put a sleeping pad under there if we need to. But that's two layers of pretty thick canvas. Mm. Now. The other thing that'll help the tautness of this is once we tie these out, and I've got paracord for that. Yeah, it's gonna be really hard for this angle, for me to get this angle right, so if you can't see, then we shall figure that out later. Thing is, is I don't think I can, what I probably have to do is tie it to this tree as high as I can and then do a stick, but at least the tension will be 
Not that that wouldn't work, but if you're going to lay under there, you need a little bit more of a pitch to it. Oh yeah, we got we're, we're good. Once again, the height is the only problem. Okay, I know what must be done. We're gonna take that grommet right there and tie it to that tripod, that grommet to that tripod, and then I'm gonna find a stick that we can make and figure out a way to tie that off, so. Handy dandy gadget. Feels like I hit what I'm aiming for. Tear down my guy line over there. Use that for something later. Get the bite off. I don't know if it's better to do this end or this end. I think right here is the best. So, especially if you pull that at an angle. I'm going to step over here and just shave this end down a bit. Okay, we're close. Let's see if we can. Just Wayland, uh, just Wayland axe is definitely good for, for hatch. It's definitely good for chopping. I mean, carving stuff. Almost. Now, but just don't chop it off too much. Because we want to keep it sturdy. Perfect. And that, my friends, is what we want. Because I wanted this to wedge against the bed. Oh, yes, sir. God, that feels good to be done. Whoo! Now it's got to lay in it. Hope it don't break now. And that's sagging a lot more because I will fix that thing on the back end. Oh, hello. Oh, that's the one I didn't tie off, that's why. Oh, it's beautiful, baby. Absolutely beautiful. This thing's solid now. Okay, guys, so I'm going to pack up now and go to the barbecue and... I will see you guys tomorrow, but it'll be the same video, and we're going to spend the night in this bad boy, fix a place to have a fire, even though this is a hill, and uh, cook some food, and we'll have a good time, so I'll see you then.
All right, guys, we are back. So things ended up not going according to plan. Uh, I was planning on coming out, uh, you know, yesterday and doing the overnighter because um, it was supposed to rain and all that stuff. It ended up not raining, none of that. But then tonight, um, it's supposed to be getting down to right at freezing. So I thought, you know what, I'm going to take and wait until tonight. Um, you know, still same stuff, just took and brought a different backpack. And uh, instead of using a wool blanket, I'm going to be using a new sleeping bag because once again, I'm wearing this little donkey, uh, these pants and this shirt. I brought a leather jacket and a thick hoodie because um, right now it's only about 55. So like walking in here, it was really nice, you know, having this on, but the temperature is going to drop pretty quickly. Um, and then uh, I'm going to take and try to build a small fire. It is pretty windy, so I'm going to have to figure something out uh, in regards to that because uh, I brought some soup. Had a, a pretty heavy meal earlier, so I just I brought a big can of uh, you know chicken noodle soup just to kind of warm the soul and uh, you know get us ready for uh, for uh, sleeping tonight. I got a decent size hole dug and I cut my thumb up on a rock. But there's actually just come out of this hole. There's a bunch of rocks around, so just for extra safety precaution, I'm gonna line this as much as I can with some rocks. So for today's fire lighting do jig got uh and it's the uh, atomic bear um really long you know wax treated jute um match and then i want to use the uh the holtzman knife and uh the ferro rod that comes with this will be the first fire that i started using this particular fire rod. that fuzzied up a bit All nice and fluffied up. Take that coating off of there. There we go. Just want to stick to the back of the knife. Let that get going. Hopefully the wind don't completely screw us over. Ow! Oh, 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 that was warm. So like whenever I said it didn't rain, I just stepped on that and put it in the dirt like an idiot. Um, it did sprinkle some, but like it didn't come the rainstorm it was supposed to, which I was really disappointed about. Um, because I was really looking forward to spending a night under this thing in the rain. Listening to that beautiful sound of rain on that canvas tarp. So y'all, the wood's really dry. We're not gonna have a big fire, just enough to hang our pot over. Okay, but I got something pretty cool and uh, new that I'm gonna try out with this sleeping pad. So, um, flex tail. This right here is a miniature air pump that can inflate and deflate. And that bad boy right there, I mean, look how small that is. That thing is like ridiculously small. And it's also got a, uh, a light on it, so you could take and hang it. You can't kind of like the lantern. The charging cable still in there. It comes with all these. Uh, attachments and nozzles so i have to go back and figure out again which one's which so you're just taking pop that on there like that right here is the uh the gear doctor sleeping pad which y'all have seen me use quite a few times so yeah then all you do is you just take and wedge that onto there where it's got the one-way thing and it'll start pumping up
So I think this upper side is going to be where my head is, and this will be the foot area. So I'm going to see if I just got to watch because there is a lot of briars over here on this side. This on the inside, and then pumped it up. But I'm going to show you guys that pump. Oh, well, if anything, this is just to show you how tough this sleeping pad is. Sir, baby, I don't have beds this comfortable at the Ritz Carlton. So, got another new nifty little gadget, and this is from uh, Camping Moon. This is a collapsible uh, hanging tripod for cooking. It has a hook, all that good old stuff. And uh, this is the largest one they make. And I went ahead and got the larger version because you can take and make this as tall or as short as you want it just by, you know, how many sections of the legs you add. Um, and all they do is they just take and screw in to this top portion where the chain is and that's the best place to start because if you put all the legs together um, when they're really long then it's a little bit more difficult to uh, get the long version screwed in so the only thing the only ones that uh, you know are the standalones are the, are the ones that are the bottom or the feet part and you'll notice them when they because they have the little they don't have any threads on them so that's what it looks like so that's how that works and with the bell handle and everything else that we got on our titanium pot that right there should be about the perfect uh should be about the perfect height and if you want to adjust the height of the chain to bring it up all you do is pull this up you know take this little pin stick it through the section of chain and you're good to go but i think that right there where we dug that hole that's going to be about perfect here well, this is the uh, this is our vault pan oh, 900 milliliter pot which would be about the perfect size for even some progresso chicken and homestyle noodles and i like this one because it's got a pot top on it we have to screw around the can over so now we'll just take this hanger right there and that right there is about perfect i wish that it was a little bit to the left but there's not a lot i can do about that but it'll slowly heat it up it's not like we got to cook it all right while the soup's warming up i'm just screw it we're gonna go ahead and get the sleeping bag out i don't think that we'll have to worry about anything getting on it i'll take it and throw my leather jacket and my hoodie over top of it this is a new sleeping bag I've been dying to use. It just hasn't gotten cold enough. Uh, but now that, uh, you know, it's getting down, it's going to be getting down to right at freezing. So this is a uh, down sleeping bag. By, I believe it's pronounced Zuby Lives um, Outdoor Products. So comfort limit is 10 degrees Fahrenheit. But, you know, like the recommended range is kind of around, you know, in between uh, like 20 degrees Fahrenheit and I guess like 35 parade temperature. But this thing right here is light as a feather because it's well it's filled with feathers um and it'll be a really good test for it too because i mean i have nothing on under these thin hiking pants and then this thin shirt i do have those extra like that hoodie and stuff if i need it but let's take and get this bad boy out of this stuff sack compared to other sleeping bags i believe at the time this uh, this was 99 dollars, like right at 100 dollars for a down sleeping bag this light and durable because it's also water resistant it's not you know waterproof but it's this outside material is supposed to be highly water resistant which is a big you know it's a big thing for down sleeping bags because once they get wet or if they get wet you're pretty much screwed i've also got the uh, the pillow that goes with that pad but since the pad's underneath there we we'll have to put the pillow inside the uh, head of the sleeping bag keeping the bag in good Standing. That's actually not too hot. Alrighty, well, I am going to sit here and enjoy my soup. I think I believe there's only I don't know 45 minutes left before uh, before the sun sets. So I'm going to take and eat this, and then after that, I guess I'll bring. Uh, 
I'll bring y'all back whenever it's time to crawl in the sleeping bag. I just gotta remember to take this knife off because like I mentioned before, this Holtzman's knife has a uh, integrated knife sharpener on it and definitely, a, you know, like a sleeping bag material like this, it would tear it to shreds in the middle of the night, which is not an optimal outcome. All right, guys, the temperature has definitely started to, uh, to drop off a good bit. I'm going to take and crawl into the sack here. I'm going really to take this stuff off. We're not going to be using our head space area. We're just going to place that stuff right there. I brought that inflatable pillow, but uh, I think I'm just going to use this because where this has that hammock style set up, um, yeah, I might as well leave that on. That might help show things a little bit better. But yeah, right now it's about uh, it's about 44 degrees. I took and threw the leather jacket on. Um, looking at the weather, it's not supposed to dip down to around 32, 33 until around I think uh, 3 a.m. So uh, we'll have plenty of time to get in here and get the bag warmed up. This thing is lofted up beautifully. In this particular situation, I wish that. The zipper was on this side to make things a little bit easier, but but it's a really nice night. The uh, the wind pretty much completely calmed down now. Oh, um, however, I think it, the breeze is supposed to pick back up tonight, so we'll be able to see how well the you know the outer material of this bag right here does when it comes to blocking windshield i'm definitely going to be using this bag a good bit this this year like whenever i'm not using a wool blanket or i mean it really just depends on the shelter type oh baby this thing is comfy already if anything i just hope it don't get too hot but since i got on this thin pair of pants and shirt i think it'll be just fine Oh, I'm going to take the headlamp off here in a minute. Oh, baby, bro, this is so comfortable. Oh, and too, because of the dip, it, the dip in this, like where it's kind of got that hammock body to it, it's really comfortable to lay on your side, too. Like, I think I'm going to end up probably having to sleep with it, like, halfway unzipped because... It's, it's it's warm <laughs> but yeah so uh, that's that's gonna do it for uh, tonight ladies and gentlemen I will uh, talk to y'all in the morning we'll probably wake up uh, I don't know if this section where we're at at the elevation we're at if there'll be any frost but we're right at the uh, the uh, the temperatures of uh, you know frost and everything so we'll see how she does like since this shelter has has plenty of overhang on the front so you know we ain't got to worry about any moisture but uh, talk to y'all in the morning Oh. Oh. Good morning, guys. Uh, how's it going? Oh, it is uh, drastically uh colder than it was last night whenever we uh whenever we went to bed i just took and checked the weather app on my phone and uh it's showing that it's 33 degrees fahrenheit uh with uh you know like an overall feel of right around uh, 30 degrees <clears throat> i got up and peed and you know obviously i set the i uh, set the camera up and uh you know, getting out of this warm sleeping bag was uh, was a bit of a shock because, like I said, I still just got on this really thin shirt and pants. But I gotta say, this sleeping bag, thirty, you know, a feel of thirty degrees, you know, comfort limit on this is more than accurate, especially if you was already wearing um, 
you know, like warmer, warmer weather clothes. I mean, I mean, uh, colder weather clothes. Like, sorry, my brain doesn't work in the morning. Um, but this this shelter setup slept phenomenal. Like, this is this is a type of uh, like long term setup that like you could use and you know be very happy to to come back to and sleep in night after night and yeah with this bag i actually took and slept with it about i'd say like a quarter of the way unzipped throughout the whole night even with the temperature like it was i wish i would have put this hoodie in the sleeping bag so that it could have warmed up because i need to put it on because just from having my head out from inside the sleeping bag my ears are getting cold but yeah, guys, that's uh, that's going to do it for this one. Uh, you know, you'll probably see, uh, you know, I'll probably come camp out here again at some point before I end up taking this tarp down and doing with this, uh, doing with this tarp what I'm gonna, well, what I have planned to do with it, which will be a fun little DIY project. So, uh, as always, I really appreciate you taking time to watch the video. Please uh, make sure you hit that thumbs up button, uh, hit the subscribe button, the notification bell, all that good old stuff. Share the channel, videos, friends, family. Anybody that you think would enjoy this type of content and, uh, you know, feel free to hit me up in the comments section with uh, questions, concerns, um, or just, you know, anything on, on your noggin. So, uh, until the next one, guys, adios. Oh, yeah, and don't forget to check the, uh, don't forget to check the links in the description. So, now, adios.